Defendant is Clifford L.B. Parties come forward, please. Your appearance, counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Alex Klein, Steyer, Mead Woods on behalf of the plaintiff. Let's have the witnesses sworn in, please. You both raise your right hand, place on the Bible. I'm sorry. I'll do that. Sir. Sorry. Right. <laughs> State your name for the record, sir. I'm Clifford Jefferson L. Bay and Booking for Sonus Juris. State your, your name for the record, ma'am. Brianna Smith. Do you both swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. All right. You may be seated. Oh, sorry. You, sir. So, I swear the truth, yes. yes. You may be seated. All right, this is a complaint for non-payment of rent. I ask the plaintiff's attorney, how much rent does your client say is currently owed? Your Honor, the total rent that's owed as of today is $5,572.77. How many months would that be? That would be three months. The monthly rent is $19,04.03, but the tenant gets a credit of $46.44 every month. So it's $18,57.59 times three. $18,59? $57.59. $1,8,5,7,8,9,10,11,12,13,14,15,16,17,18,19,20,21,22,23,24,25,26,27,28,29,30,31,32,33,34,35,36,37,38,39,40,41,42,43,44,45,46,47,48,49,50,51,52,53
Okay, Ms. Smith, what's your position with um, Woodhaven Terrace LLC, the uh, plaintiff in this matter? I am a legal representative for the institution. Okay, do you have a title? Legal representative. Need speak up. I'm sorry, legal representative, I'm sorry. Okay, well, uh, in your position, <coughs> what are your responsibilities? Delinquent accounts and collection of non-payment of rent. Okay. Um, in it, with responsibilities, oh, I'm sorry, with those responsibilities, um, are you familiar with the um, the facts of the uh, the case that we're here on today? Very. Okay. The gentleman sitting to my left, um, uh, is he a tenant at Woodhaven Terrace? Correct. Okay. And um, is there a written lease agreement between Woodhaven Terrace and the tenant? Correct. Did you have a copy of that? I do. Um, Your Honor, if we could just have this marked as I have it marked as P1. Thank you. Um, Ms. Smith, uh, what, it, what is the... Why don't you um, hand it to me and I'll mark it. I've got a pen in here somewhere, Your Honor. Thank you. Oh, thanks. You need uh, this back, counsel? Uh, please, Your Honor. We've got that in some renewals. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Ms. Smith, uh, the lease that we just handed up to the judge, um, is that the, uh, what's the, what's the rent stated in that lease? That is the original lease that was signed in 2000, I guess it's oh, okay. I don't know, in 2014. Per the renewal, the rent is 1857.59 after the rent credit. Okay, and, and that renewal, is that this document yes, that you're looking at right here? Yes. Okay, Your Honor, if I can mark this P2, please. Okay. Um, now, P1 and P2 here, the documents that we've just spoken about, are these um, are these accurate copies of the lease and the renewal? Correct. Okay. Um, and again, for the court, uh, what's the current rent on this property? So the current monthly rent is eighteen fifty-seven fifty-nine. Okay. Now, does this tenant have a balance? Correct. Uh, and what is the tenant's balance? The, the tenant's balance to date, including late fees and any legal fees, is five thousand nine hundred and fifty-three dollars and seventy-seven cents. Okay. And, and with just rent. Uh, not including late fees and legal fees, how much is owed? $5,572.77. Okay. Now, did the, um, was any rent has any rent been received from this tenant in November? No. What about in October? No. And in September? No. Okay. That's uh, what we have on Do you have any ledger or anything you want to oh, do? Yeah. P3. Okay. All right, sir, you can cross examine the plaintiff's witness if you like. Yes, Your Honor, I have some documents I'd like to present. Well, record. do you want to ask her any questions? Yes. Um, uh, first of all, P6, are you the, uh, your, what are your, uh, uh, your position at Woodhaven Terrace? I am a legal representative. Okay, do you have the right to subrogation? Objection, Your Honor. That Subrogation is the right to collect debt or insurance on the debt. Because under the law, under the New Jersey State statute, uh, um, uh, 46 Are you seeking to subrogate, sir? Your Honor, I'm not even sure. I don't even know exactly what that would mean with regard to these proceedings. I'm fairly certain that my witness well, who's, who's seeking to... I assume your witness is not authorized to subrogate. So, you're, I, 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 I can't because she's an employee. Is she an employee of the? She is, yes. Your Honor. What, 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 what's your, what's your position? I am a legal representative. What do you mean a legal representative? So I work in the legal department. I handle delinquent and um, delinquent accounts and non-payment. You work in the office. Yes. Okay. So she's not looking to subrogate, sir. Right to subrogate is the right to be able to collect the debt on as the bench beneficiary. Objection. She's Your not Honor. the beneficiary. She's a worker. If, right. you, if she oh, if the owner is the only person that uh, okay. Now, are you are you, do you have any more questions for you, or do you want to make a legal argument? I want to make a legal argument. All right. Do you have any more questions? I don't have any questions. For no her more questions. Okay. She, she's herself 
is not able to answer your question Objection, because I didn't make a contact Honor. with her. Objection, uh, Overruled. What else do you want to tell me? I didn't make a contact with her. According to the lease, the terms and conditions of the lease of the contracting parties, Right. my name is on the signature. Right. There's on, if you really look at the lease, there is no signature of the actual owner or the so-called landlord. Well, the, owner, the, council, is the owner a corporation? The owner is a corporation. Your okay. Honor. The owner so is a corporation. The, so, so, so if the owner is a corporation, the corporation can't, it don't have any substantive rights. My rights as a natural the person. The corporation has no substantial rights? No, they do not. No, not at all. Person. So if you look at the lease, Your Honor, yeah. I signed the lease as a natural person. So let me ask you this. I have a, a mortgage with Bank of America. Can I just not pay their my mortgage? Well, you can't pay a debt with a debt, Your Honor. No, no, the no. I, I owe. I I have to pay money to Bank of America for the mortgage on my house every month. Now, Bank of America is a corporation. If they're not allowed to collect the debt for me, can I just tell them I'm not paying anymore? Repeat. I miss your Your Honor. Repeat that one more time. Well, I have a mortgage with Bank of America. Yes. Okay. I have to pay them a certain amount of money at e each month. Because I borrowed the money to buy the house. I got you. Now, now, if if I now Bank of America is a corporation. If they're not allowed to collect money from you're me, to can I just tell them I'm not paying anymore? <coughs> is Bank, it that easy? Banks can that, it, really. If it's that easy, I'm going to go check this out. I, I got. I, I could save a lot of money if I don't have to pay them. First of all, banks are trustees. They're not allowed to print or make money. Right. Their job is to accept. So can I just not pay them? They're not a bank. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about Bank of America. Can I just not pay the them? Bank is a, the Bank of America is not to be lending any money. That's a violation of the Banking Act. It is? Yes. It's a, it's a not violation of the Banking so, Act. So I could just not have to pay my mortgage? You is can just really start. The, the process is for, under laws of commerce, is discharging debt to the Department of Treasury. Okay. As you open it up, I gave the actual plaintiffs uh, uh, a certificate to, to discharge the debt. They were paid in full. Who was paid in full? The actual plaintiff. Oh, well, I'll be happy to see whatever you got on that, sir. It's well, Mark, this is D1. Our laws okay, of, let me, the let laws me see. of the banking, of laws of commerce, I'm able to start the debt with an instrument. And according to the code, if I feel okay. as though there's a dispute between an instrument bill that's okay, based on so fraud and the right to recoupment. Now, you got here. The they were sent by certified mail as well. So this is. Dated September the 5th. All right. Money orders being accepted, return of valuable consideration. And I have not seen it. Now, now where, where does it say that you discharged the debt? It's just charged the debt is based off. The coupon that I sent to what is, they, is the coupon in here? There was a th they kept it. They didn't receive it. They actually cashed in on the Sestu Quay account with uh, uh, Middlesex Management because in the what affidavit did, what they do in the affidavit I I gave them an uh, instrument which I actually uh, signed my signature which gave it ability to be discharged to the Department of Treasury. I actually sent them the IRS instructions for discharging debt. They received it. I even gave them a proper response to, to, to respond to the actual agreement and acceptance. If they didn't agree to it, they ought to respond by way of notification. They have not done so. So failure to respond in lieu of acceptance is agreement. Also, with their claim, they have not even submitted an affidavit in lieu of the summons and complaint, which is the violation of the procedural rules <coughs> that was established when we first got here. So the only thing I received in lieu of the defense was a summons and complaint. No affidavit to, to rebut anything, any affidavit that was sent by certified mail to the plaintiff in lieu of the right to discharge the debt according to commercial code. Now, I asked the plaintiff's attorney that what type now, of species... Do you have a copy of this thing, that you, this instrument? The instrument? The, the instrument. You have a copy. Did you make a copy before you sent it? Though? I didn't make that. I didn't make the copy. But the affidavit actually states the actual instrument number. There's, there's an affidavit. Is, do I have the affidavit? The affidavit's in front of you. Affidavit's in front of me. Okay. Let me just find my page. Right. So, so you gave them an instrument. Yes. And this instrument discharged the debt, did it? Yes. Now I. Actually, now how does that? Now how does that work? Because 
I ask the plaintiffs what type of species are they requesting. I asked him, were you looking for Federal Reserve note? He said no. So I asked him, because there's different types of species, checks, money orders, coupons. Those are credit, credit instruments, instruments that can be used to start. Gold and argument. silver is legal tender, too. Article 1, Section 10. That's the only, but gold and silver were, were actually abandoned in the, with the House Joint Resolution 192. Okay. So because of that, the citizens have the right to discharge their debt, loot being that there is no lawful money to pay a debt with. You can't oh, so you're saying that none of the money that we have is lawful. Is that lawful? Therefore, nobody can can uh, collect on a debt. That's your argument. No, the the law says that. The law uh, says that. Yes, Uniform Commercial Code. And you got it in here, right? It's in the affidavit. Right there in the Uniform Commercial Code. Uniform Commercial Code. And it's got all the sites in here. So I go up, I go back, I look this up. It'll say all well, that. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Everything is back. Do you have up. anything else you'd like me to look at? I also, um, the once again the. The complaints should be dismissed because they have the rules state that there should be a, com a com affidavit upon penalty of perjury in lieu of the summons complaint right. that should be sent to the plaintiff. I have not received that. The only thing I received from the from the actual court was a summons letter, a mail to a corporate artifice. As you see in the complaint, my name is in proper form. When the court sent it back to me, it was in all capital letters that denotes to a legal fiction. On the actual lease, the terms and conditions on the lease. It's in all capital letters. That's a legal fiction. But when I signed it, I signed it as a natural person. So they they actually listed me in the lieu of renting me the apartment as an employee, i.e., trade in commerce. Why? Because you can't you can't uh, uh, in commerce. The only thing that's tax deductible on a apartment building is based off uh, uh, gross. It's called gross contract. So what the plaintiff has done is that they they have got out of their obligation by way of New Jersey State Statute uh, 12A1, uh, 12A1-203, uh, which states that the tenant is supposed to pay for all, including rent. So under a term called net lease, net lease says that the tenant has to pay for the not just the rent, but all maintenance, all registration, all insurance. So now, if they're saying that I owe a debt, they have insurance for it. So that means that they have collected on the insurance already. So now that's a violation of law. Why? Because it's banking. That's all. That's fraud. Why? Because you saw and you got paid already. The Minnesota State Management is a company that gives insurance to any tenant that's staying in any one of the so-called duplexes. So now, if that's the case, what Haven is suing me, not Minnesota State Management. Minnesota State Management is not only asked for a complaint. It's what Haven Terrace. So now, how are they going to make a com complaint on a debt that's owed when they're not actually the party who ha is the insurer? The insurer has to collect the debt or the beneficiary. Well, apparently, the beneficiary has to collect on the debt. Why? Because they discharge the debt to the Department of Treasury under the Sestu Quay account, i.e., my, my Social Security number. Why? Because a check is in the bill of exchange. They, I so you gave them a check? I gave them, uh, no, a coupon. A um, there's different types of checks. I gave okay, them a you didn't coupon. give him a check. You gave him something else. I gave him a, a statement coupon, a statement which, I, coupon. which I accepted for value and consideration right. by way of signature. I put my fingerprint on it. Right. I sent it to them by way of affidavit okay. and gave them the law. Said if you rebut this affidavit in lieu of discharging by way of commerce, please respond so and write. They have I not understand. done so. Okay. So that's 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 that's, that's soon as acceptable. Okay. So you you didn't send them like cash or a check off a bank account or a money order, anything like that, you gave them this instrument, this I gave coupon, them a new, it's, it's and, for, and that was supposed to cover the three months of rent, right? It's supposed to cover the amount that's on the face of the actual instrument, I got and you. I give life to it by signing my signature off my credit. This is my credit. It's not their credit. You sign it off my credit. I give life to the credit because there ain't no money. So um, that's why the lease, if you look at the lease, the terms and conditions on the lease is, has a, a legal fiction. Okay. which is all caps. But when I sign my signature, initial or way signature, that creates a security agreement. So that means right. that I'm the secure party in the, in, yeah. in the so-called contract, according to law. And, and they, there's no way for them to actually collect money from you because there ain't no money, right? That's not money. So the only so way... Those, that, like the green things that I have in my pocket with pictures of dead presidents, that's not money, right? That's called a negotiable instrument. A Are they negotiable note. instruments? But it's a Federal Reserve money. note. Federal it's Reserve. Used Okay. As you said, when they pay a debt, right. they pay a fee and discharge to the Department of Treasury. I see. So now if it's money, what does the Department of Treasury need to be for if it's, if it's lawful money? It's only used as an exchange to be discharged as credit I in see. the Department of Treasury. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
you. Anything else you'd like to show me? That's it, Brother. Okay, that's it. Council, you got anything further before I take this all in? And you know, like, I'd like to look at the lease if you have. Absolutely, it. Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, just very quickly, if there are. We did step out for settlement negotiations. It's a little bit hard to understand some of what's being said here. Well, I'm going to look at all his stuff. He did a lot of research. I should at least. I understand, Your Honor. Thank look you, at Your it. Right. Your Honor, the only thing I would point out to the court is usually these cases are very simple. Landlord says how much money is owed. Tenant says yeah, paid it. Or they I are pretty simple. But Your Honor, this all, looks all a little more complicated. I'll have to look at all. Your Honor, the man did research. I should at least look, read it over. I understand, and Your Honor, I see all that research, and it, it makes mm -hmm. me think, oh, are there things I don't know? But th what I would point out to the court is the question that still never seems to get answered is where is the proof of those payments? Because it sounds like there's something being conjured up out of thin air here but no actual payments. Because we got to the part about that voucher, too, in our conversation, and that was kind of where things ended. Okay. I guess what I'm saying is this sounds like the usual, I didn't really pay, with a lot of fancier language attached to it. Okay. That's all, Your Honor. Can I, can I respond to that, Your Honor? Can I respond to that? Of course. I'll give you the last word, sir. Okay. So he just said that according to his understanding that it has not been paid. You have a payer, you have a payee. The payer is the one who issues or draws, or i.e. the beneficiary, mm -hmm. who actually pays by way of credit, because you can't pay debt with a debt. So I issued out on a, a negotiable instrument and sent it to him to discharge it to the payer, payee, which is what? The Department of Treasury, because this is how it's done. So you're basically, you're drawing on your Social Security money at the Treasury, right? The trust account. The trust account. The that's what. That's what, how you're paying the money, right? Yes. Okay. All right. That's all I need to know. Give me a minute and make those copies for that. Those people over waiting. Let's Thank you. Right. I'll be back. presence both parties now defendant did a lot of research and, uh, he's owed a response and everything he researched he cited a lot of laws and statutes and things cases and such and I'll go through each one of these in first, whether or not the plaintiff is properly represented. The plaintiff apparently is an LLC, a limited liability company, which is treated for purposes of representation under New Jersey law the same way a corporation is. And pursuant to Rule 6, colon 10, for a corporation to appear in court, they just have to be represented by a lawyer. They have a lawyer, they're allowed to appear. Now, the testimony of one of their employees to authenticate their documents and to claim, and as well as the, uh, their their books, uh, their records of what's been paid and what hasn't been paid, uh, that is specifically permitted pursuant to the appellate division case of Hanuman University Hospital versus Dudnick. It's a 1996 appellate division case found at 292 New Jersey Super 11, so they're allowed to put on their case the way it is. Now, the defendant says, well, wait a minute, they can't, they're, they're trying to subrogate. They're trying to collect on behalf of someone else. She, she's not allowed to subrogate. Well, they're not claiming they're subrogating. Subrogating is when one party seeks to collect money that's owed by another party, where some party stands in the shoes of someone else. That's why we're an insurance company if they pay your claim, 
then they go to sue if you get into an accident somebody hits you they pay you then they sue the person that hit you trying to get reimbursed they stand in your shoes acting as though they're you and and they sue on in order to get reimbursed for that debt but that's not that's not what's going on here there's not a second party seeking to collect on a debt or collect rent it's the, the LLC it's it's uh, uh, Woodhaven Terrace um, the defendant says wait a minute wait a minute they don't really own this there's a lodial title here now a lodial title it's an interesting concept it's it's um, anything that's not really owned by anybody goes back to uh, the state goes back to ownership uh, I guess at the settled first settlement of New Jersey originally now a lodial title I guess would originally vest within the British Crown but does it really because the British Crown granted that to the pr original pr boards of proprietors of East Jersey and West Jersey this is located in what was before the revolution East Jersey and there was an East Jersey Board of Proprietors. They're the ones who held a lodial title. They, in the 1990s, I believe, transferred all of their assets to the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. So if there is a lodial title, it's NJDEP that's got the lodial title, not any individual. <coughs> now, having said all that, now the plaintiff says, well, we owe three, the, the, the tenant owes three months of rent. The defendant really doesn't dispute that. He says, hey, I paid this. I paid this. I gave them a negotiable instrument. A and it's all, and he's got all, he didn't keep a copy of it, but I don't doubt that he did that. I, if he says he did that, I believe him. And he says, well, how is this a negotiable instrument? Well, basically, he's claiming that he's got a sestui qui trust. Now, there are many people, and he mentions the Social Security Fund in there. And there are many people who believe that when the United States went off the gold standard in 1933, all of our money is no longer legal tender because it's not backed by gold and silver, so it's not really money anymore. Um, and because of that, the United States was, 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 was bankrupt, and all the money held by any by the federal government is really held by all of us and all we have to do is is write a check based on all these these, these money in federal bank accounts and, and and we get our share from that well no federal court has ever upheld that I'm not a federal judge I don't imagine I'm going to be appointed to the Supreme Court of the United States anytime soon so that's that's really beyond the competence of a landlord tenant court but I looked at the uniform commercial code and I looked at the Social Security Act now the uniform commercial code does not provide for checks or other negotiable instruments to be drawn on any money in the Social Security Fund or, or anything else in the federal government, unless the federal government writing the check. And the Social Security Act does not permit individuals to pay debts from the Social Security Trust Fund. So for those reasons, sir, and, and I wish I, I have to rule against you. I got into a judge for possession. I wish I didn't have to. I wish I could rule in your favor, because if, if, I, if, if I could, then I wouldn't have to pay my mortgage. Now, you have, sir, you have every right to file an appeal. Every, I, never take a, I never take offense when people do that. I actually kind of wrote up my reasons for you, so this way you can uh, uh, seek to rebut them with uh, the appellate division. and. Uh, you know, if they, so we'll give you a copy of this. I will also write, I also wrote down how much. So if you want to just go to uh, uh, social services and maybe they'll come up with the money, and even though it's not money in your view, if they actually come up with, with uh, a check drawn on a bank where they can get little pieces of paper with dead presidents on them, 
uh, that would that would allow you to stay in order to, to stay there. So I'll make copies of all this for you, and we'll come back. We'll come right back. Thank you. Those copies right away, sir. Thank you. So so what is your ruling on? We got a copy for you.